I'm Stephanie, and welcome to So Many Things. So today I thought we'd do a little comparison on bandana bibs. There are so many different styles out there right now that it's really hard to narrow it down to just one that you like. So I thought if we made three of the most popular ones, so I found them on Pinterest, I'm assuming that they would be the most popular as far as ones that people seem to click on the most. Like I mentioned, we have three different styles. We've got our traditional triangular bib. There's this rounded cowl style. And then there's what it's called an, inf well, they have named it an infinity style. So it's like a fold over. This is the multifunctional one as well. So we'll give that one a try as well. Now I know there are many other styles of bandana bibs out there. There are, these ones I think are all snaps. There are some that are tie on. There's some that are Velcro. Fastening is personal preference. The joy of making your own bandana bibs is that you can tailor it to your personal preference. So where I put a snap, go ahead and feel free to use Velcro or any other fastener style that you prefer. I have taken the time and cut out all the pieces because I know that that's a little bit of tedious work as far as when we have multiple patterns that we are working with. So I've gotten them all cut out. This is the first pattern we're going to be working with. I got it off so for home. Now there are three different sizes in this. So it comes in a zero to six, a six, to 12 month and then a two to three years. So this pattern will take you th all through those drooling years. It also features um, an availability for a grommet hole here for you to be able to tie on like a soother or something of that nature so that um, child always has it on them. So I've gone ahead and cut out a front and a back and I'm just going to pin them together. So. Bandana bibs are relatively simple to make. It's a front and a back, and you turn it inside out and then you top stitch it. So I'll go ahead and line these ones up. Now all I'm using for a backing on this one, actually for all of them, is just a standard diaper flannel um, or a heavier weight white flannel. I usually leave my hole for turning here in the neckline. I know it sounds silly, but once ch the child has it on them, that part is going to be ruffled a little bit. So you won't notice the turn point if there happens to be a little bit of a, a lump there. Whereas if you have it down the side, those are physically visible areas that you will see when the child is wearing it. So this one is all pinned up. You will notice on the pattern, it doesn't tell us physically a seam allowance, but it does leave us a little dotted line here that will tell us that our seam allowance should be about a quarter inch. Let's take this one over to our sewing machine, stitching all the way around again, leaving a hole for turning here at the neck. So I've gotten it all stitched around. Now we're gonna want to trim off and clip these corners a little bit so that they sit nice and flat when we turn it. So I'm just gonna use my pinking shears and go around my corners. And I'm also gonna get the tip. And we're gonna go ahead and turn this inside out. Once you've got the corners all pressed out nice, you're gonna take it over to your iron and you're going to give it a good overall press. After I pressed it, I did go ahead and top stitch it all the way around. This closed off our hole that was up here and also just finished the edges really, really nicely. I do try as much as possible to match my top stitch thread with the color of my item that I'm making. And then I do the same for the back. So on this one, I used white on the back and red on the front. Now you can also use an accent thread if your pattern has quite a lot of different colors. That would look pretty as well. But I thought that for this one, we're really 
aiming for the plaid to be our focus, so I didn't want to take away from that. Now on our pattern, you would have noticed a little circle up here in the top corner. That is where you want your button or your Velcro to be. So just to make it easy on myself, I'm going to go ahead and just use my hole punch and punch a little hole there. We're now going to work with this dotted line and we're going to line it up with our finished bandana. So you should be able to feel down the sides, if not lift up the sides a little bit, that you're kind of on that line. That'll give you your perfect position for your hole where I'm just going to use my dressmaker's chalk and color that hole in so that I have a perfect little spot there. We're gonna flip this pattern and do the same thing on the other side. Now that we have our two locations for our snaps, we're gonna install those right away. I do have quite a wide selection of colors for snaps, but if you order off Amazon, they give you a nice little starter pack that comes with your, your snap press. So here I'm gonna try and choose between red and black, and I think because my red is a little bit more Christmas red as opposed to this darker red, I'm going to go with my black. So you'll need what we call caps, you'll need two caps, a male end and a female end. And you'll just center it on your dot that you made and push it through. The, the one thing that I did get mixed up on when I first started making bibs, I would just automatically go and I'd put this one in front side as well. You can make your hole on the front side, but then insert your cap from the back. That way when you go to tie it up, they overlap and they match. Otherwise you're gonna be twisted and you'll have to take it off. There we go. Bib number one, complete. So for our first bib, I went with a flannel front with the diaper flannel back. This one I'm gonna go with a cotton front with the diaper flannel back. For our second bib, we're going to do this more rounded style. This I find is a little bit more feminine, so if you have a little girl, this might be the route that you want to choose, as opposed to the traditional bandana style. It also gives you an opportunity to embellish that curve. So I've chosen this very cute aqua rib, uh, like zigzag ribbon that I'm going to pin along the outside of my backer before I sandwich my front in. changed my plan of attack a little bit. I've noticed that it didn't cut my front and my back exactly even. So I've gone ahead and switched up my strategy and I've done the ribbon on the front side of my bib. And now if my backer is a little bit too big, then that's okay. So on So Many Things website, you will find two different styles of bibs that I make and sell. And for those, I tend to not pre-cut the back. I'll just pre-cut the front and then lay it out onto the back. That way I'm not fiddling with matching up my fronts and my backs. I know that if my front is laid out flat on my backing fabric, that it'll be completely covered and that I shouldn't have any problems when I'm sewing. So if that's a strategy and you know that you have a little bit of extra fabric, that might be a strategy that you want to try because it is almost impossible to get two pieces cut exactly the same. There we go. So this one's all pinned in. This pattern does tell us right here on the front that it uses a 3 8 seam allowance. So that's what we're going to use for this one. So again, off to your sewing machine, get it sewn up and leave a hole, same thing in the, in the neck for turning. So FYI, your ribbon will melt under a hot iron. I forgot to turn my setting down and I melted my beautiful ribbon across the side of this, but we're gonna work with it anyways. This pattern also doesn't give us a button placement, but what I would suggest would be putting it in about a half an inch in from the corner. That way you've got enough room to get underneath the button and to be able to give it a good pull when you're putting it on and removing it. So for this one, I have a teal button somewhere. So again, I've gotten two caps, a female and a male side. And same as the last bib, I'm just going to push it through 
all the layers of the fabric, add on the back, and press it together. The other side, I'm gonna pre-drill pre it, I guess, from the front. That way I know that my snaps are in the same location on both sides. And then I'm gonna press it in. And this one's complete. You can also add a, a secondary button if you wanted to, if your child is a little bit smaller and you wanted to make it a little bit more adjustable, you can also add in a second snap if you wish. Let's move on to our third and final bib. This last one they call an infinity bib. It's meant to fold over so that you have a double layer. So it's probably a, a better option if you have a, a high drooler or you want to use a thinner fabric. So when you go and grab this, you'll actually notice that they made it out of What do they call that fabric? I'm stuck. I can't think of the name. The swaddle blanket fabric? You all know that one. I can't think of the name right now. But hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. That's what they've made it out of. I don't have any of that. So I've chosen to go with this fabric that's a, it's like an off-white with quite a beautiful embroidery on it. It was an old dress that I had purchased from the thrift store that I actually turned into a, a beautiful pair of booties. I thought since this one is more of an infinity style and there was a little bit more fluff to it, that this would actually be really pretty and I'm going to use this on both sides. So I've cut in two identical out and I'm just going to, once I find the fronts of both, lay them right sides together, give them the quick pin, and then sew them all the way around. Again, leaving our hole for turning. Now, this pattern does not specify whether it comes in different sizes. It's just one pattern. So if we compare the size of the one that we know that is zero to three months. I would say it's probably a zero to three months. So if you're looking at making it bigger, I would just scale the pattern up when you're printing it. So instead of leaving it at 100%, maybe bring it up to 110 or 120 to try and get the extra length and width that you need for a, an older child. Again, because this is all a curve, I'm gonna go the whole way around on this one. Now you'll have noticed that none of these projects have actually taken us very long. All in all, maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes to create all three of these bibs. So it is a quick and simple project that you can make and you can make multiple of them in one sitting. So if baby's down for a nap for half an hour, that's a good chunk of time that you could be very, very productive in. Same as our other two, we're gonna take it over to the iron, give it a good press, making sure that we're working out our, our seams all the way around. And then we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and top stitch it all the way around. I've gotten it all top stitched. I'm hoping that this angle will give you a, a better view of this beautiful little pattern that's on here. So what we're gonna do, same thing as the others. This bib actually does give us pattern placement for the two buttons, so it is adjustable. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did to the first one and I'm just gonna use my hole punch. And I'm gonna go punch a hole over top of both if I can reach um, both of those hole options. Now again, taking into consideration your seam allowance, you're going to have to overlap it. Let it hang over the edge just slightly. This time, because my fabric is white, I am going to use a, an erasable marker and I'm actually just going to make a little dot because this one has given us an option to be adjustable. 
this time we'll need four caps, two females, and two males. You'll want to make sure that you put the two males on the same side and the two females on the same side, as I've done that before and it doesn't turn out very well. So I can see how this can be very versatile, depending on the fabrics you choose. If you do like a cotton front with a minky back, I can very much see how it could be used as a, a little lovey blanket or a burp cloth. If we would have chosen our diaper flannel back, it would have been very absorbent as far as you being used for a burp cloth or even a little lovey. Because this is more of like a lacy fabric, for this version, it's more of a, just a, a bib rather than anything else, but it also has nice texture, so the baby might like to just rub it if, they, if they're a sensory child. So to wear this one, we would fold it over, and then fold it over, and then clip it on the back. So it will have like a double, double layer look, just because that's the only way you can actually do up the buttons on the back, is to have it not quite overlapped 100%. So this one as well is very pretty. So here are our three finished bibs. They all turned out very beautifully, other than my little oops. So the traditional bandana bib style would be more suited to a little boy in comparison to these other styles that we made today, but they are all very, very beautiful. Now again, depending on what you make your bib out of will depend on the absorbency of the bib. So that will depend on your preference and your child. So I've made the three different styles with the flannel, with the cotton, and then this is just a nice pretty lace. So this would be more of just like a, a going out accessory rather than a practical one. It is also very, very white, which we as moms know that is not always the best option. As far as ease of making this one for a little girl would probably be our best option. It takes very little fabric. It is very quick to sew because it's just around and across. And the options for embellishment are almost endless. I really hope that you've enjoyed this little comparison with me today and that you've enjoyed making these bibs. And that obviously I've helped you in making a choice as far as which bib style you would like to make your child. If you've liked sewing along with me today, Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and hit that notification button. Thanks for sewing with me.